Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is I want to look at the equivalent resistance of this cube network resistor, except this time I'm going to look at the equivalent resistance across the edge of the cube. I previously did a similar video, except I looked at the equivalent resistance across the cube diagonals. Now I'll link the description to that video in the description down below, but in this case I'm going to consider something a little bit different. So again, I have 12 identical resistors. They're uh, placed in a cube like this, and we're going to exploit the symmetry of the problem to make the calculation easy. Uh, otherwise, you end up having just so many equations to solve for, and it can be done. It's just much, much longer than it needs to be. I'm going to assume that all the resistors are 100 ohms, uh, so let's set up the problem and see how you get to an equivalent resistance. Um, after what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a measurement, so I built one of these little guys. Um, each resistor was... It said 100 ohms on the package. They ended up being about 110 on average. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and make a measurement across the edge, see if it works out. So let's get started. All right, so here's uh, one edge here that I'm gonna consider. I'm gonna call this point here point A, uh, uppercase A, this point here uppercase B. And I've just extended that line a little bit um, just to make it a little bit clearer on the diagram. All right, what we're gonna do now is, well, let's assume that we have some current going in here. I may have some current I flowing in, and at the end of the day, I may have some current I flowing out. And those currents, whatever goes into this point, has to be the same current that's gonna flow out. So the first thing to consider is, well, imagine this current here. Now if it's a cube, and all of these resistors are just some value R, um, this current here, Whatever flows down this side is probably going to be the same thing that flows down that side. I'm going to call this I1, and I'm going to call this I1. Again, and that's because of the symmetry of this cube. There is no difference between the top branch versus the bottom branch. Right? The cube looks exactly identical uh, from these two perspectives. Now, this other branch, on the other hand, this case is not the same, right? The cube, there's, this branch does look a little bit different, right? All right, how about on the other side? On the other side, you can play the same type of game, right? From the cube's perspective, again, you got this middle branch here, which is kind of different. But these two sides, again, I'm going to argue that the current has to be the same. Now, what that allows us to do is if the current I1 is the same, that means that the difference of voltage between this point and this corner has to be the same as this corner versus the lower corner. I'm going to call this point C. Right? If the current is the same because of the symmetry of the cube, the voltage between the corners over here have to be the same between the voltage difference between both of those. Likewise, if we can argue that the current flowing across this resistor and this resistor is the same. That can only be true if the voltage at these two points is going to be the same, and I'm going to call that point D. Now, it might not be the same as point C because it's on the other side of the cube. All right, so we've already simplified this quite a bit. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to flatten this. So I'm going to call this side over here side A, let's go ahead and draw these two lines. And let's try to simplify this network. So this will be A, and this will be point B. All right, now if I go to A, I see that that breaks down into three different resistors, right? And A is connected to B through this resistor right here at the top. So let's go ahead and draw that one. So that means between points A and B, I should have just a single resistor, and that's this one right here. Right? That's between point A and point B. Now, how about between point A, which is here, and point C? Actually, you see point C, again, just refers to the voltage, is at these two diagonal corners. Again, I'm going from point A to point C, and there's two different paths I can take, and they're actually at the same voltage. If you wanted to, you could actually connect a wire between both of those points. Because they're at the same voltage, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to do that just to keep the diagram clean, but so let's go ahead and draw that, what that looks like. So here's a path that goes from point A all the way to point C. 
So let's draw point C over here, except there's an identical path that goes on the other branch. And this looks like this. This is point C. All right, now we do the same game on the other side. We have two points that lead to point B. And they go through a point that I've labeled D on my diagram. So let's go ahead and draw those. And again, all these resistors have the same value. So here I'm left with point D down here. Now we're doing pretty good at this point. What we have to do now is look at what connects point C to point D. So here's a resistor that goes between point C and point D. What else do we have? We have another one over here that goes between point C and point D. Um, and that's it, that's all we have. So let's go ahead and connect both of those. There are two paths, they are in parallel, that connect point C to point D. All right, I'm flattening this quite well. Let's see how many I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I still have five more resistors uh, to add to my diagram. So I may need another letter. Uh, let's see what we haven't included. We haven't included the point down over here. So that's going to connect point C to, let's give it another letter, let's call it point E. Again, if you see between point C and point E, I have two resistors over here. And again, both of those are in parallel to each other. So we're going to add a branch over here. This goes from C all the way to point E. What else? On the other side, you can play the same game. On the other side, I'm going from point D. I have yet identified what this one is. Let's call this point F. You see I have two ways from going from D to F. I can go down this branch or I can go down that branch. So let's go ahead and do that. I can go along one of those paths or along the other path. And that's how I go from D to F. Now the last thing we have to do is we have to include, include the connection between point E and point F. And that's along this back edge over here. And there's only one way to go from E to F. So that means there's only one resistor between both of those points. Again, every single resistor in this diagram has a value R, which I've given as 100 ohms. You see, once you have the diagram like this, this becomes pretty straightforward to solve. We have a whole bunch of resistors here that have two, two branches that are in parallel to each other. Very easy to simplify those. So let's go ahead and simplify this network and get to our final answer. All right, so I've got the previous network here. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna realize here is that I have a whole bunch of these combinations here. We have two resistance, which each have a value R, and they are in parallel with each other. Look at this, I have five such combinations. So let's go over here and just work on simplifying this. I think if we could simplify this, it'll make our life a lot easier. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is, since these are in parallel, uh, the rule to simplify those in parallel, again, we're just going to replace it with one single resistor, which has the value of both of those in parallel. Uh, to find the equivalent resistance over here, all you need to do is you use the rule, right? They are, you multiply it, R multiplied by R, divided by the sum, which is 2R, which in this case gives me a value of R over 2. So each of these guys is equivalent to a value R over 2. So we can do that, R over 2. And anyway, I don't have to write the rest of them. I think we get the picture over here. They're all going to be the same value. Uh, what I'm going to do after that now is I'm going to go in this bottom branch. Look at what I have over here for this bottom branch, right? I've got this. I've got one resistance R, and then I've got another R over 2. So let me go over here and replace all of this bottom branch with another equivalent resistance. So remember what we're going to have. We're going to have a value of R over 2. That's going to be for this one. This is R over 2. This guy down here is R. And that's in series, right? It's in series. And then the last one here is also another R over 2. Well, this is really, really simple. That means that this whole bottom branch here 
which we're going to use the green color over here. This whole bottom branch between point C and point D simply has a value equal to 2 multiplied by R. So everything in green here is equivalent to twice R. I think at this point what we're going to do is just because there's getting a lot of colors here, I'm going to start kind of simplifying this. So let's go ahead and kind of erase some of these values. And we're going to just substitute some equivalent resistance values there. Oh, I think this is going to help me quite a bit. So all I have here is this is 2R. That's what I just solved for. And let me go ahead and replace that orange one. Uh, this orange one and get rid of two of those. And all I have to do is replace it with one of the orange resistors, which was R over 2. Okay, great. Um, the next step, what we're going to do is, again, I'm going to work my way towards uh, point A and B. So what we're going to do here is maybe just simplify both of these, right? We have two resistors. They have different values. However, they are in parallel with each other. So we can go ahead and simplify both of these. Um, again, I'm going to use the rule. If two resistors are in parallel to find the equivalent, you simply multiply them. In this case, that's the multiplication. And you divide by the sum. The sum is 2R plus R over 2. Okay, let's carry this out. Um, what you end up, this 2 cancels with that one. Uh, you're left with R squared up top. At the bottom, 2 plus 1 half gives me 2 and a half. Now, two and a half, I can write as five over two. Instead of writing five over two, let me just write like that, put the two over here, and I still have the value R. Uh, this cancels with this one. Um, and at the end, you're left with two R over five. So you can replace everything here between point C and point D with an equivalent resistance of two R over five. So let me go ahead and do that part. Let's get rid of all of this. We don't need it, don't need it, and we don't need this anymore. Now what we're doing is we've simplified this in terms of only one equivalent resistance, which is 2R over 5, if I do that correctly. Again, let's not forget our other orange one, which is also R over 2. All right, you can see where this is going. We're going to repeat the same steps now. Is I'm going to leave this one here alone for now, and I'm just going to focus on everything over here. What you have are really three equivalent resistors that are in series with each other. So let me go ahead and write the equivalent resistance of everything in red. So I have an R over 2 from the left-hand side plus 2R over 5 in the middle and another R over 2 over here. You can combine the R's over 2. That gives me R plus 2R over 5. So this is like 5R over 5. Uh, at the end, you're left with 7R over 5 for this entire bottom branch over here. So let me go ahead and simplify all of this. Kind of erase some stuff here. I like the erase function on this notability. It kind of works pretty smoothly. And what we have is um, this bottom branch. And now it's going to be connected to a resistor, which I just calculated, which my red value over here. Let's draw it in red. Uh, this is 7R over 5. And now let's not forget that original one that connected these two points is just one of my original ones, which had a value R. So our last step, uh, what we're going to do here, uh, the last step, again, we simply have to combine both of these. Here we have two resistors that are uh, in parallel with each other. So all you have to do in order to find the equivalent resistance, and this is really the last one, the equivalent resistance. If there's only two, the trick is you multiply them and divide it by the sum. So in the numerator, what you end up getting, if you multiply them, you just square that R over 5. And you divide by the sum. The sum is going to be R plus uh, 7R over 5. Uh, let me just put everything here over 5 at the bottom. That helps me add them easier. Um, so in the numerator, you still get my 7 over 5. This is R squared. And in the denominator, what you end up getting over here is 12 over 5. All right, yeah, the 12 R over 5. That was everything there. Now you could simplify a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the 5s can cancel out. This R will cancel with that one. And the last little bit, this is right, our final answer, that the equivalent resistance for this entire thing, kind of a lot of algebra, 
But let me tell you, if you would have done this problem without using the symmetry, you'd be here for the entire weekend. All right, and this is our value over here. Our equivalent is equal to 7 multiplied by R over 12. All right, let's now go have a look and make the measurement and see what we get. All right, so this is the picture we have. We have points A and B, and we have a whole network of resistors. We've calculated what the equivalent resistance is. Now, again, if R is equal to 100 ohms, this is pretty straightforward. That means that the equivalent resistance for this cube measured along an edge, well, you simply do 7 multiplied by 100 and divided by 12. And that should give you approximately 58.3 ohms. Okay, that would be the R equivalent for this problem. Now, I told you that when I actually measured my own resistors, I actually obtained something a little bit higher. I got on, on average, it was about 110. Uh, some of them were as low as 104. Some of them were as high as 116. But on average, it gave me about 110. If I use my same equation to calculate what the equivalent resistor is for 110, again, 7 multiplied by 110 on average, uh, divided by 12. Uh, this gives me approximately 64.1 ohms. All right, let's go ahead and make a measurement and see what we get. All right, what we're going to do now is simply just go ahead and make the measurement. So I've got the cube. I've got my two probes uh, set on measuring resistance. I'm just going to press down and let's have a look what we get. Get about 64 in a little bit, right? That's not bad. What I can do is I can flip it around. Now i got to be a little bit careful. It's not exactly a cube, so if I press too hard on it, I get pretty much the same thing, a little bit lower. Again, the values, there's a little bit of spread between the values of the resistors, but it's pretty close, right, regardless of how I measure it. Let me flip it upside down. Let's try maybe along this edge. Oh, flipped over. Not too bad. A pretty accurate uh, solution.